You ever felt catfished on a piece? Well, today's project, that's exactly how I felt. So here's the story. I'm looking for a mid-century modern piece to gift to my nephew and his fiance for their wedding. And they want it to be refinished to wood, which if you refinish, you know it's difficult to find first a mid-century modern, true mid-century modern, in good enough condition to refinish. So a lot of times I have to resort to painted pieces to find one that's in good enough condition. So I found this piece um, on Facebook Marketplace and it's a mangle, which I've never worked on a mangle before. They're a good brand. Um, it has been painted. The previous owner bought it painted. Um, they just switched out some hardware. So unfortunately it has a lot of little damage on it from veneer missing and chipped. Um, they even painted over some of the brass accents on the base. So, I mean, I think it'll be a good flip. I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to go all the way to refinish it to wood. So, I picked it up for 40 bucks. We'll see what I can do with it. I have no idea what's under it. I'm hoping it's not laminate. We shall see. Let's go. So here's some close-up shots of the piece. You can see it's a mess. You know, you sometimes there was only one shot when I, in the listing for this, and you just think, oh, okay, well, maybe it's not too bad. <laughs> then you get it home, you're like, oh, wow, yeah, that's pretty bad. And so I'm really concerned about these drawers because the damage underneath them, I, I don't know what's underneath it. Is it damage? Is it veneer problems? What is going on underneath? It just, it's weird. I, I don't know. So I'm gonna start by taking off all of the hardware and getting it stripped. And we'll find out what's underneath this weird paint. So I decided to do a little test on strippers and I have acetone, I have smart strip, and then I have greenies. So in the past, acetones worked well. I mean, it is a paint remover. You can just simply pour it on and a lot of times it, the you know, paint will just bubble up. So I thought, well, I'll put it down and then I'll put some paper towels down and I'll put some more acetone on top of it. Maybe that'll help it from, cause it does evaporate really quickly. And so we'll see if that kind of helps me with my test. The second stripper I use, this is by Smart Strip, and it is their Citrus Stripper. It's uh, like a non-toxic stripper, um, similar to Green Ease. Green Ease is also a non-toxic stripper. Um, I'll have all the links below for these um, particular strippers. I let everything set for an hour, and then I came back to do my testing to see how well they came up. So here's the Green Ease. You can see it's coming up really easily, no problems. The second one was the Smart Strip. It also came up really easily. You can see I'm going against the grain, which you really should never do. It caused me to do more sanding. So this was for a test purpose, but in the future, I will not do that. The acetone did nothing. There was no bubbles, nothing. So I got my carbide scraper out. I'm just gonna scrape down, see how far down I can get to raw. So in this particular instance of the greenies, the smart strip and the acetone, um, I really think that the smart strip did the best because it really got further down to raw. I'm gonna continue the stripping process on all the drawers and the rest of the body. Put a little bit of painter's tape underneath those hardware holes just so that everything doesn't drip down. So I'm putting a really generous layer on, I'm just applying it with a chip brush. I'll let it set and then I'll come back and start the stripping process. Again, I'm using my carbide scraper. I'm using it very gently. These can gouge your wood really easily. So what you wanna make sure is you wanna make sure it's really sharp and you wanna just put light pressure on it but it really helps me get down to raw quickly. After I've done a first layer of scraping, then I come in with some acetone and a paper towel, get some more of that stripping residue off, then I'll come back with a medium grit to a fine grit steel wool and get as much of that finish off as I can. Because in this particular instance, I'm not just taking off paint, but I also need to take off the finish underneath the paint. I'll use the same process on the louver drawers as well. In those detailed areas, I'll come back with a wire, like a soft wire brush. It'll help me to get into those details to remove as much paint as I can.
you can see there was paint overspray on every drawer, on the sides, on the back, on the inside. And so I had to use acetone to get as much of the overspray off as possible. And then I actually uncovered brass accents. They painted over brass accents. So the stripper pulled it right off. I'll polish those up later and reattach them. I won't. I love brass accents. And so there's no way that I'm going to leave those off. It's a really interesting detail. Anytime there's like brass inlays or a brass accent, there's no way I'm going to leave those off. So the drawers um, aren't in great condition. After I stripped everything, um, lots of repairs have already been done. So um, must be like Bondo repairs. And the long drawers on the right-hand side are the worst. The louvered drawers aren't as bad. I just have a crack in one of them that I would have to fix. Silver lining, I was able to uncover the brass on the legs and it's beautiful. I can't believe anybody even painted over it. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Um, the case itself, I think the sides are in pretty good shape, but I haven't stripped those yet. The top has repairs on it. Um, I don't know what to do. I don't know if I can stain and a lot of ingrain painting especially on the drawers and they're a different color wood so the drawers on the right are a lighter color and they're the same color as the top and then the sides and the base and the drawers on the left are a different color so I think they're more like a probably more like a walnut and the other is I don't know um, I don't really know what it is. It's just lighter. So I got some decisions to make, but I'm going to take a break today because it's super hot out here. We are reaching probably 97, probably feels like 150. <laughs> I'm going to stop for the day and then I'm going to come back tomorrow and I'm going to strip the sides and the frame, the rest of the base, and then I will assess it and see, make some decisions on what to do. So I don't really know. The next day I came back and I stripped the sides. They stripped pretty easy. There's not a lot of damage underneath them. I used the same process, stripper, use my carbide scraper to get off as much as I can, come back with a wire brush, some acetone, and some steel wool, get down to raw as much as possible because that'll really save me in the sanding process.
What's that saying about a kettle of fish? This piece. I have it fully stripped and I'm super disappointed. Let me show you what I found. Okay, here it is fully stripped. You can see I uncovered, this is already damage that somebody has fixed and then painted over. Lock a few pieces on the top. We've got some more veneer damage on the back. Another patch here. I've got one crack in the doors in this uh, second drawer here, but I've got different wood here different wood here. Actually, the sides are in great shape besides a corner piece, which is pretty common, you know, to have a piece in the corner. You can see from the back, that's pretty good chunk. And then this side, just a little bit there, but the rest of the side looks really good. Still have some more veneer damage there. And then find it, there's some more veneer damage that's new there. So I'm just not really sure exactly what I'm gonna do with this piece, you know, with the different kinds of tones that I have, different, completely different species of wood, and then I have so many areas that need to be um, fixed. Now, obviously, if there wasn't Bondo, I could have done some wood filler. Um, I can still do some ingrain painting over Bondo, but you know, this is a skill I'm learning. I don't know that, I mean, that one drawer is bad and I just don't know if I have the skills <laughs> to do that. That's a lot, that would be a lot for me. So, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand it down, see where I'm at and then uh, make a decision from there. So here we go. I'm gonna go through the sanding process. So I usually start at 80 grit, where I have any areas that still have some finish on them, and then I'll move up to 120, and then I'll stop at 180. I have this spongy interface pad that I can attach to my sander and it helps me get into some of those curved and detailed areas. This is a little one inch pocket scraper and it's great for getting into tiny details. They also have one that has like a teardrop attachment that can help you get into some of the uh, curved areas as well. And then I wrap some sandpaper around some contours and that also helps me get into different profiles that are hard to reach with my sander. Now I'm going to work on my repairs. I'm going to go around the entire dresser and I'm going to make sure all of the veneer is glued down. I'm using tight bond glue and then I'll come back in and fill that area in with some wood epoxy.
There was one corner on one of the drawers that was just missing a bit of a chunk of it. So I'm taking a, a mold from one of the other drawers and I'm going to use it to recreate the, um, that area that was missing on the other drawer. As that dries, I'll move on and continue to put some of the wood filler on the areas that I'm missing veneer. So once that mold has dried, I'm just gonna gently pry it off and you can see it's recreated that corner. So now what I'll do is I'm gonna grab some Bondo, some wood filler, and it's a two part system, one part putty, one part hardener. And you're just gonna mix it up into little batches. It dries really fast. You have to kind of be fast, be ready to work. And so I'm just gonna fill up that mold and I'm going to attach it to the corner that's missing. And then once it dry, I'll come back and refine that corner. I'm gonna fill in the hardware hole. So I'm using Bondo with some wooden dowels. I had a little bit of extra room with the wooden dowels. So I'm just gonna fill up that extra room with some Bondo. You could use wood filler. Since I'm painting, I'm just gonna use Bondo because I had it mixed up. But if you were staining, you'd wanna use wood fill. I'm gonna trim down some of the excess Bondo with a razor blade. And then I'm going to use um, sandpaper and some of my contours to really refine that corner. I'm really recreating that corner that just wasn't there. Bondo's really good for more of a structural repair. It'd be really difficult to try to recreate a corner with um, like a wood fill. You could use like an epoxy wood fill, that would work. But um, Bondo, since I'm using paint, I'm re repainting this, uh, Bondo seems to work really good for a structural type of repair like this. When the Bondo dried, I used a flush cut saw just to saw off those little dowels and then I'm going to sand that area smooth. I did one more application just to get the top perfect and so now I can refine that again with Bondo sands really well. So you just have to just keep sanding until you reach the look that you're wanting. So there was a crack in one of the drawers and I've already opened it up and I re-glued it. But there's just a hairline crack at the top where you can see where I've um, glued it. So it's our, the structural repair, I already did that before, I forgot to film it. But now I'm just kind of getting rid of that hairline area. So I'm putting some glue over it, sanding it in. The sawdust um, with the glue is creating a bond and it's covering up that tiny little hairline crack. I'm gonna tape up the sides so that I can paint it. You can see there's already a lot of overspray on the inside of this drawer, but I'm going black, so I don't want any additional overspray. So I put some painter's tape on, put some painter's tape underneath the lip of the drawer, and then I'm just wrapping some brown craft paper around it, and that will help keep that paint from overspraying onto the drawer. I had to do some extra hand sanding because um, when I was doing my stripping test, I went against the grain and it created these lines. And so I, somebody mentioned, oh, you need to do it with the grain. And I was like, I know, but I was, it would mess up my shot. And so shout out to my commenter, 
Um, they're right. I shouldn't have done it that way, but I did. So it caused me about an extra 30 minutes of hand sanding. So when I test again, I will probably go horizontal on my testing instead of vertical. So going with the grain is how you want to sand or strip. You don't want to strip against the grain um, if possible. So there's a little tip. I'm going to do the same thing on the drawers that I did on the body. I usually start with 80 if I have any remaining finish, but then I quickly go to 120 and then I follow with that up with 180. Now I'm ready for my first coat of primer. I'm using Zinger's 123 water based primer. I'm just going to, I'm only doing three drawers, so um, I'm just going to apply the primer with a paintbrush. First coat of primer usually reveals any problems that you have. So I did notice I still have some areas on the side that I wasn't really happy with. So I'm going over that with some DAP wood fill and then I'll do another coat of primer and see if I'm happy with that. You can see I still have areas of irregularity. There was a lot of problems on these drawers. Obviously that's why they were fixed in the first place. But I'm painting them and I want them to look really, really good. So I'm going to go in and do a little additional fill. Okay, I am in it now. Um, I primed, I, I did a little bit more fill on the drawers that I'm gonna paint. Well, let me back up. What I decided to do is I think I can salvage the top. There are some areas that I'm gonna have to kind of doctor up. But my plan is I'm gonna stain the top, the sides, the frame, the four drawers, on, or the three drawers on the left, and the base. I can get that to wood. The drawers that were on the right, they were really bad. Um, I'm gonna paint them and I'm gonna paint them black. They were in really rough shape. And so I did some additional fill and I primed them and they looked horrible. So I'm like, okay, we're gonna make this right. And so I flooded the whole thing with glazing Bondo and spread it out with my Bondo spreader. And um, it's looking really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another coat of primer and see where we're at.
had a couple spots on one of the louver drawers that was a little dented in. So I'm going to use some steam. I'm going to try to get it to raise the grain so that it will fill in those dents. It's a really great way if you have these spots. It wasn't 100% perfect, but it looks so much better. I'm ready to start the sealing process on the case of the dresser. So I have no idea what kind of contaminants this dresser has seen. So because of that, I can go ahead and just put the gel stain or a stain right over it. But before I do that, I'm going to apply a seal coat. This is de-waxed shellac. It's branded as several different things. De-waxed shellac, sanding sealer, seal coat. It's basically something you can put under all finishes. I mean, you can put it under, it's guaranteed, you can put under oil-based, water-based, lacquer, catalyzed finishes, epoxy, and varnish. Because it's de-waxed, it won't interfere with your other, your top coat or whatever you're putting on top of it, whether it be a gel stain, oil-based, water-based, whatever, you can use this. And so it's super flexible. Plus, because it's shellac, it's gonna seal in any kind of tannins, contaminants, odors, anything like that. So I think because of all the little issues I've had with this dresser, I'm gonna go ahead and apply this first, and then I will come back and put my stain on top of that. That should hopefully make sure I don't have any kind of problems with the finish. We'll see. This is a little siphon gun that I use when I'm using solvent-based things a lot because if I don't want to do a lot of cleanup, there's not very many moving parts on this and so it's easy to clean. So I just attach it to my small air compressor and you can see it just does a great little job of laying down the product. You can see how it's really popping the grain too. So it really helps me to see what the grain is going to look like. Now I'm gonna start my repairs since I kinda of know the color that I need to do. I may have to do multiple, but I'm gonna start here. So usually start with my lightest color. I'm using Blend All Sticks by Mohawk. So the whole thing on Blend All Sticks is you want to start light and then you work your way up. And you need to seal in between each coat. So you can see I'm doing a light coat and then I'm sealing it with their easy vinyl sealer. And then I'll keep coming back and I'm working my way around the top of the dresser and I'm just filling it in. I'm just going darker with each coat. These are waxy type of sticks and so it works really well when you're doing an oil-based stain. And so you do have to seal them because they are wax and so you wanna make sure you seal it after every coat. You can use them to uh, draw in some graining, but it's just helping you to blend it into the surrounding wood. I'm ready for my first coat of paint on those three drawers. Um, it's kind of late in the day, so I wasn't gonna load up my spray gun. I will load it up tomorrow. I'm gonna get my first coat down though tonight, and I'm using Benjamin Moore. This is their command paint, and the color is in tricorn black. I'm ready to stain. I am using General Finishes Gel Stain. I like to use a combination. You can see sometimes it gets all gunky in there, so I had to pull that layer out. But I decided I'm gonna do a 50-50 mixture of brown mahogany and nutmeg. Nutmeg tends to run a little orange, so I like to kind of warm it up with either usually antique walnut or brown mahogany. 
friend of mine recommended these stain pads. You can cut them and then you have to kind of defuzz them. But once you do your initial defuzz, then um, they are lint free. This is my first time to use them and I think it really helped the stain go down very well. Gel stain is really easy to apply. You just simply wipe it on. You can wipe it with the grain. You can wipe it against the grain. Um, and then once it's sat for just a few minutes, you're gonna wipe off the excess with a lint-free rag. Gel stain's great because it just kind of sits on top of the surface of the wood. It doesn't penetrate down. So especially on a piece like this where I have a lot of repairs that I had to make, it can help kind of disguise some of the irregularities in your wood. I'm going to use the blend all sticks to continue to work on the areas that need a little bit more blending. I decided to do a second coat on the top to see if that could help kind of blend everything in. I had that little repair on the side that really just didn't want to take the gel stain. So I'm using a chip brush and a tiny little artist brush. I'm just going over it very gently. I like these brushes because they kind of replicate wood grain. And I'm using them to just kind of work the gel stain in. I do believe it needs some toning, so I'm just going to mix some wood stain with a little bit of my top coat, and that's going to help kind of tone it and see if I can get it a little bit less uneven. You can put up to 10% of dye stain in your top coat. I'm just going to go with about 5% is what I'm going to start with. I have it in my Erlex 5700. You can see it's basically just like a tinted top coat is what I'm doing. And I'm gonna see if that'll help even it out. I didn't feel that was quite even enough. I'm gonna layer a little bit more stain on top. These are all water-based products, so they all play nicely together. This is the color espresso, and I just put it on with a chip brush, and I'm just wiping it back, but it created a little bit more depth to the top and really helped blend everything in. Now I'm ready to attach my hardware. Um, you wanna, I was gonna put it right in the middle, but I had to, sometimes you have to put your hardware on top and really see, okay, how will it look on it? So all of my drawers were different um, widths. And so I had to just kind of adjust it and use my jig on each particular one. I wanted to try to match the distance between the top and the bottom. So sometimes it just takes a little bit of time to figure out how you want to adjust that hardware. You can see I'm using my Erlex for my second coat on the black. It does provide a really beautiful finish. And then I switched it out and I was able to do my top coat with the Erlex as well. For the drawers, you can see I had a lot of overspray. So on each of them, I had to come through with some acetone and get all of that paint off. And then I was ready to condition them with some Danish oil. 
For the hardware, I'm using some Barkeeper's Friend and I'm just giving them a really good polish. Once I have them all cleaned up, then I'll give them a spray with some brass lacquer and that will just kind of slow down the tarnishing process. Well, let's look back at the before. Can you believe they painted over those brass accents? Man, I don't know. This one was a mess. I didn't even know what was underneath all that paint. Definitely felt like I was catfish because I didn't realize there was so much damage that existed underneath those drawers. But um, man, after a lot of stripping, sanding, a um, lot of decisions to be made, a lot of pivoting, and a little concern because this was the during process, here's the finished product. What do you think? I know, it's stunning. <laughs> I love it so much. I am so surprised a bit that I was able to get it to wood. I mean, the wood is beautiful. And I, I mean, I know I could have painted the whole thing. I, I know that. But, it, you know, those louver dra drawers were beautiful. And the sides were beautiful. And I thought, and the base was beautiful. If I could get that top, I really felt like I could get it to wood. And so, I mean, is it 100%? No, but oh my goodness, it is so much better. Um, I, I couldn't get those to wood. I gave up and just painted that side, but I really like the modern look. I, I, the, the new hardware, I think, is beautiful complement. The brass accents, if you know any of my videos, I love brass accents on furniture. I think it really elevates a piece, and so just being able to put those back, I think, is wonderful. You can see that repair I did on the left. It worked out fine. I had a few on this side. They're again not perfect but they're really good. Honestly I wasn't sure how it would look with it being kind of a two-toned look but I think because of the clean lines and the aesthetic of the piece I, I just think it's stunning. So what do you think? Did you think I could make it to wood on this one? I was really not sure I could, but I'm very pleased. Tell me what you think in the comments. Do you like the two-tone or would you have just painted the whole thing? Thanks so much for watching.